gentlemen, great to see you here at the Chorus Building so early in the morning. Um, you and I keep running into each other, which is fantastic. I think you keep running into me. I mean, you're the man about town, and yeah, I've been luckily at the right place at the right time. No, I'm actually the stalker. That's the only <laughs> thing. But you, my friend, it's been a while, man. It's great to see you. Philosopher King's Return of the Kings. That's a huge statement, and not a lot of people can back it up. But this man deserves that statement. Oh, well, thank you kindly. No, man, we've always been quite bold and uh, confident, and... Uh, we love playing live. We're so excited to be back on stage, uh, all of us together. Um, it's been uh, it's been amazing. Yeah, I was there for you guys did a show last year. It was I think it was was it the Mod Club or it was the Mod yeah. Club? Yeah, 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 yeah. What was that like doing that show? And more importantly, knowing that you know the fans were there, they still wanted you guys back, and even that show helped create new fans as well too. It felt amazing. I mean, that one, it started off as just family and friends, and then some more friends came, and, and yeah, so we had an amazing night. That was like our warm-up for sure, just to, I think, get, you know, prove, okay, this is what it feels like to play together again. Um, and it's like no time had passed. I mean, we put in so many hours together on so many stages that it really clicked uh, immediately. Yeah, it definitely did. But what was cool, too, is you guys had some new acts that was opening up for you guys. What was it like, though, when you're seeing these new acts and you're thinking to yourself, man, we were them <clears throat> so many years ago, and now you guys are part of Canadian music history, folklore? It's it's exciting. Um, yeah, one of the one of the artists opening up on this little tour is an artist I'm producing and developing named Zach Oliver. Yeah, and he's 21, which is the age I was when the Philosopher Kings got started. So it's really uh, it's super cool to uh, you know see the future and you know the past kind of collide like that. It's really cool. Okay, he's a really so good guitarist too. So let's ask the question: Who decided it was time after 10 years apart, the Philosopher Kings needed to be back together? I will give I will give Jarvis full credit. I made, the, I made the classic Blues Brothers call. I'm getting the band back together. I never was just like, it was really fun. Honestly, that was great. So the time was right, right? Yeah. We've had, I mean, a couple of us, we've said mm -hmm. it before, oh, we mm -hmm. should do something. Mm -hmm. But it was because there's so many of us in the band and everyone was doing a million and one things. It took until now for all the stars to align and it finally did. But what made you think this was the right time? And... How did you even know the guys wanted to get together? Because a certain other buddy was busy with his other group, too. You know, it, it's actually the 20-year anniversary of our famous Rich and Beautiful, our, our biggest album. Yeah. So um, our agents said, guys, we want to, you know, we got this opportunity to, to do a tour. Somebody had suggested it, and somebody thought it was a great idea. So initially, we were just going to do sort of a, a, a tour of our old material. And then, you know, we just got in the studio, we got together, we got the bug, we said, let's just do a, a new album and keep this thing going. And it turns out, I think we had some really great songs kind of waiting to be, to be written and recorded. So that was the great thing. Okay, so what was that like then to get back together and who started initiating the new music itself? Oh, well, actually, uh, yeah, Jarvis and I got together uh, in the first day, within like the first hour we wrote Still the One, which is the, the first single. And it just was like, so natural and I, I don't know we were both really excited about it and it, it the whole process the writing process was pretty smooth oh I yeah mean, yeah painless painless yeah, no more drama there's no more <laughs> whoa, drama whoa, whoa, whoa. you got no more drama uh, yeah no that's not true we had our first band fight in 20 years the other day so we can still do it oh but God. you know what but I was, gonna, that was nothing instead of three hours it took 10 minutes and we made up at the end so. yeah no there used to be a lot of band drama like everything was dramatic songwriting was dramatic everything and now it's just everything is really easy really relaxed you know none of us are trying to prove anything to each other I think we've all kind of done that already so we really get a chance to just sort of sit back and 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 let each other you know help and and add to the process it's great what, but was there ever a worry that do, does the Philosopher Kings fit in this new era of new music? Because remember, back then when you guys were dealing with groups like the Bare Naked Ladies, um, Our Lady Peace, you know, different acts, different style of music. What made you guys realize that you guys could still fit in? Or did you worry about that any time? Uh, well, the thing is, we've never fit in. Yeah. Like, from the get-go, we yeah. were always, like, the outliers, this other, we were doing jazzy kind of pop music in the era of grunge and, and you know, and, and, and hip-hop, and 90s hip-hop. So, I think 
well, at this point, the one thing I know we talk about is that now we're like comfortable in what we do. We can look back at, at and and our fans can kind of, you know, we know we have a sound and we know what our strengths are. So I don't think we second guessed it. I mean, mm-hmm. as far as I think we, you know, we're influenced by new music. So hopefully the new record has some sounds contemporary in some way but at the same time it's still people if you were a fan back then i think you're gonna love the new stuff let's talk about the new stuff the new album what's this feel like compared to anything that us as fans growing up with your music has can compare to well you know what i've heard a lot of Uh, it sounds like the philosopher kings i hear that all the time i think it's really just the natural progression if you listen to all our albums i think this one just lines right up in a natural sort of evolution. Uh, and we're not really trying to chase what's happening uh, right now um, in music, but we're, like James said, definitely influenced by that. But we've just been lucky enough from when we started, we were given a license to just do our own thing. We had a real supportive uh, record company back in the day, and, and, and we've just kind of got, you know, we're blessed that we have fans that follow us on this journey. So, yeah, we're, we're real thankful. And you, you, were the three singles that released? Because you guys did two singles last year, if I'm correct. Yeah. 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 yeah still the one and Best in You. Um, so those came out and then we just dropped the album. So now the question is, what would the next one be? Because we and we're testing out, you know, a few of the new songs during mm-hmm. our set and changing it up. And so we're getting some really good response to a few of them. So uh, I know I've got my favorites. You've got your favorites. But. We want to hear. Yeah. We want to hear the people's favorites. Yeah. It's great with Insta- with with uh, Spotify. You know, everybody gets to hear the whole album at once, and they really get to gravitate naturally to the next song that you know that, that they want to hear. Isn't it crazy? Spotify, Twitter, all that stuff. When we first started doing interviews, man, yeah. that stuff never existed. Mm-hmm. You know, how do the philosopher kings, philosopher kings now relate to that new genre? That new openness um, with with that type of technology? Uh, you know, well, I mean, we don't tweet as much as we should. <laughs> that's that's, the, you're good. You're uh, good. I'm, that's the story of our lives, yeah. you know what I mean? It's just, uh, but, you know, man, it's the same stuff. You know, we're, all, we're about live shows. We've always been about live shows. And, and that's something that hasn't changed, you know. We get up there with our instruments and we just give everything we have and and I think uh, that's more these days. That's more of an anomaly, right? That's more unusual. So I think it is. I think that I think I mean I think there's definitely value in it. And I mean, besides the fact that we love playing together, there is a certain chemistry that that we've got that uh, I think everyone can relate to. So now, part of that, uh, you guys have been touring. I do believe Toronto's is it Toronto the last stop mm-hmm. for this for for now. Mm-hmm. Before Christmas, yeah. Before yeah, Thursday, December twentieth. We're at the Mod Club. That's the last one. For and this then, little uh, run. And then across well, Canada. Yep. Uh, in February, across Canada. Fantastic. Yeah. Man, oh man. Dumbest question I could ask, but it's really the most important. Did you ever think that the Philosopher Kings would have this type of legacy? Not just re- representing the city, but representing Canadian music the way you guys did then and how you're doing it now. Both of you guys want to get the answers. No, I mean, it's ridiculous that we're performing songs we released in 93, you know, like it, it, I, it is a blessing um, that people still are interested in us. Uh, we really, I think we just have that kind of appreciation um, that we carry with us now. Um, yeah, we, we definitely are yeah. a rare, uh, we, we recognize that we're in the very, very rare few that, that get, a, get a career this long. Absolutely. So you feeling the same way? Yeah, are you kidding? Yes. Yeah, when we all got back together, I was just I looked around and and yeah, it was one of those aha moments. That's like not only have I had a career in, in in music for 25 years now or whatever, but it's like all of us have done so much on our own and then to come back collectively together, it feels really great. And not just on your own, but what you guys have done for so many artists including like Nelly Furtado, so many artists. Um, what advice can you give? I'll use the term new school out there in getting into this business because you guys have had your ups and downs all around but you're still here what advice do you give the new school guys um i think you gotta just you have to believe in what you're doing and you have to be your own biggest fan um you know you can't fall into the trap where you're like here's something what do you think here's something what do you think it has to really be yourself i think that you're uh making the music for and Ditto. Ditto. 
Social media, we gotta go back again. Where do we follow Philosopher Kings to whatever is going on with you guys with this show coming up at the Mod Club and of course what's happening in 2019? We've got our website, of course, philosopherkings.com. Uh, but yeah, Instagram, probably the best spot. Instagram and Facebook. We are on Twitter, but so it's uh, Instagram is the Philosopher Kings and uh, same with Facebook and it's Philosopher K's on Twitter. And maybe that's why we're not as active on Twitter. <laughs> Every time. We gotta switch that up. Gentlemen, thank you for the interviews back in the day. Thank you for the interviews today. But more importantly, thank you for 25 years of great music. Congratulations, gentlemen. Appreciate that, man. Thank you, great brother. Great to see you, man. Yeah, yeah thanks, Always. Jordan. Amen. Thanks, brother.